Shade has been in a rough spot for me ever since she got reworked. Don't get me wrong, I really like most of the changes that Fatshark has made to her talents and I absolutely love the way that Blur works, but at the same time they've made most of Carillion's melee options not viable on Shade by removing her ability to one-shot elites with light attack crits to the back. Because of that, dual daggers have become the only option for most Shade mains who haven't moved to other classes since the update hit. While this pair of weapons has some of the best single target damage in the game, it also makes you very vulnerable to HOTS, which drastically limits your playstyle and makes you almost rely on your frontliners. This is the reason why I haven't been playing her all that much, but that didn't stop me from experimenting. And just recently I've stumbled upon a weapon that everyone seems to have slept on. Carillion's one-handed sword is amazing when used on Shade for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it can actually deal with HOTS. It's got decent cleave and a good headshot angle in its light attacks. It's not exactly at the dual hammers level of hold clearing, but it's leagues ahead of dual daggers. Secondly, its first heavy attack comes out very quickly and has a very nice angle of attack, meaning that it's really easy to hit elites in the back with it after using streamer strike or triggering blur. The other heavy attacks aren't nearly as good for that purpose, but it doesn't really matter as you can just block cancel and repeat the first heavy after every swing. Thirdly, it has a good combo for fighting elites up front. You won't always have your ultimate and you can't exactly one-shot Chaos Warriors with a critical backstab, so having an option to fight them up front comes in handy more often than you'd think. I'll go over all the combos in a second. On top of those three points, it also has an effective dodge count of 100. Yes, you heard that right, 100 effective dodges. For comparison, Sword and Dagger has 6 effective dodges. That's a special mechanic tied to the one-handed sword, which is more of a gimmick than anything, but it can still occasionally help. The combos for this weapon can be a bit tricky to get used to. Against the horde, just spam light attacks. There's no point in trying to block cancel that stab on the third light attack, as it comes out so fast that you're actually gonna waste time trying to remove it. Don't forget to use pushes whenever you see that there's too many enemies in front of you. When fighting elites from the front, use the heavy into light combo and go for headshots. This combo deals very consistent damage, especially with all of the headshot buffs that we'll get from our talents. When fighting elites from the back, just spam heavies to try and one-shot them with a crit. You won't be able to one-shot elites with the light attack anyway, so don't bother with the previous combo. Lastly, you need to know that both the first and second light attack skip the first heavy attack. So don't be surprised if you start charging your swing after fighting the horde and it comes out at a weird angle. If you see Karelian preparing an attack from the upper left or bottom right, just keep doing heavies until you get back to the vertical one. Or just block cancel. That works too. I found that this weapon works best when used in a shimmer strike build due to its ease of use when trying to backstab enemies. We lose out a lot on boss damage when compared to a typical Cloak of Pain dual dagger build, but we gain a lot more versatility and we're not as reliant on our frontliners. We can still do some serious monster damage with the melee attacks of our javelins though. I'm now gonna go over all the properties, traits, talents and everything that's included in the build itself. If you don't wanna listen to me talk, I've made a Ronald's gift page with everything listed there. The link is in the description. We take attack speed, crit chance and swift slaying on our sword. Block cost reduction would be nice to have, but it's not necessary. If you're good at triggering blur, you won't need BCR at all outside of revives. The crit chance is very important here, as you'll be able to one-shot elites more often. We take conservative shooter as our trade for the javelins. This lets us bypass a reload every now and then, which lets us kill some of the hot before it gets close and chain elite kills at a distance. You want to have 20% power versus armor and Skaven combined on both your charm and javelins, as it allows you to one-shot all specials in the head as well as two-shot storm vermin, gas rats, pack masses and both Nurgle fatties in the body. The trait on your charm is up to you. I love taking concoction as it guarantees us an ultimate recharge from any potion so it can leave purple pots for someone else. Just a heads up, people will try and give you purple potions in pubs, so be ready to give them back and tell them what you're using. If you're not a fan of Concoction, Decanter lets you recharge your ultimate three times from purple potions and Proxy is very good to have overall. Pick your horse. On the necklace we take the usual health and blockers reduction. The trait depends on our THP farming talent. Boon of Chalet is better for temp health on kill, while Bark Skin is better with THP on crit or headshot. I usually run the latter. 
Lastly, our trinket gives us additional crit chance for those juicy one-shots, stamina recovery so that we can push enemies more often, and shrapnel to boost our boss damage if we have a bomb. And now, time for the talents. I used to run THP on kill when I was first learning the moveset of the one-handed sword, but now that I got used to it I feel like THP on headshot is way more consistent. It lets you regen health from holds way faster thanks to the angle of your swings and your high crit chance. Both can work, pick whichever you prefer. Exquisite Huntress is extremely good as you'll be hitting headshots almost all the time. It helps us kill pretty much everything faster, including hold units and especially Chaos Warriors. It also procs from your ranged weapons so even your javelins get a buff. Assassin is great to have for the same reason. Bonus headshot damage on your melee strikes helps out a lot in any situation. Chainkiller is your main damage boost when fighting monsters. Try to hit them in the back with heavy attacks from your javelins for the maximum effect. If you often play with another boss killer, like a bounty hunter, consider taking focused slaying to get your ultimate back more often instead. Spring Healed Assassin is crucial for catching up with elites while invisible. Without it, whenever you use your ultimate, everything is gonna run past you towards your teammates and your class ability will go to waste. If you're really struggling with staying alive, consider taking Blood Drinker instead. Lastly, Shimmer Strike pairs best with the sword. It's hard to master it, but when you do, you'll be melting tons of elites and specials in no time. The best piece of advice that I can give for using it is to be patient. Take your time with each enemy and don't rush your swings. One missed backstab ends the invisibility regardless of how much time you had left on it, so keep that in mind. This is my favorite way to play Shade at the moment and I highly encourage you to try it out. You can stay way closer to the front line, and you're not as reliant on your teammates to clear the way for you. Use your sword for fighting hordes, elites and monsters when they are focusing you, and use your javelins to clear hordes from a distance, snipe specials and to hit bosses in the back with your ultimate.